Hello and welcome to my Sholak along. Yay! Um, okay, so this video is just going to give you a bit of an introduction um, to the first few rows on pattern one. So it's basically just getting you started. Now, I'm not going to basically film myself the whole blanket that I'm going to do because um, that would take forever and I really I would run out of things to say. Um, but yeah, this is so this is just to get you started. Um, as always, my videos are just so professional. Uh, today's video will be including my um, unicorn plaster because I sliced my finger open with a kitchen knife a couple of days ago. So excellent. How lovely is that? Um, yes. So, Sholak, so you've got your yarn. Yes. You've got your scissors. You've got your hook. You've got your stitch markers. Wait till you see these beauties. Stitch markers. I don't actually use stitch markers a lot myself. I just... Um, collect them. Um, but I'm going to make you use stitch markers on uh, row one and I'll explain why when I get there. Okay, so yarn. Let me move this out of the way. What yarn am I using for my next shellac? Well, I got this. Check that. How beautiful is that? This is by Hobby. It is called uh, Jarbo Cookie and I think it's Limelight check those colours. Um, now I think you remember me saying all the time that I love parchment and I was originally going to um, use parchment with this but because I'm making this for my husband and uh, he's that me, I don't really like parchment so much. So we uh, we did a bit of research and I found something else. Dun dun dun! This. This is Stylecraft Highland Heathers DK in, it's a new colour they've brought out called Campbell. Now I usually use Loch and Loch is a, is a blue with kind of hints of purple in it, but this is a blue with hints of green in it. When you look at it, it's maybe hard to see in this light, but it kind of actually looks like the kind of, like a tweed, like a blue tweed that you would get. It's really beautiful. So um, there are my colours. Now, I am not going to do this video with me crocheting the blanket. What I'm going to do is um, a little swatch so then I can use that for any other videos that I do. Because really, if I make a video using my blanket, you're all going to shoot ahead of me um, and you'll be like, oh, Abby, help, <laughs> you know, do another video. And I'm like, I can't, I'm only on row three. Um, <laughs> so, yes, so I'm going to put these aside by beautiful colours and I'm just going to use <laughs> parchment and uh, whatever green that is and these are just Stylecraft Special DK. Uh, Okie dokie. So in the pattern there is colour A and colour B. For this swatch this is going to be my colour A and this is going to be my colour B. When I do my blanket this is going to be my colour A and this is going to be my colour B. Okay. Uh, so yes, so back to these. So did you know, fun fact, in Scotland, a swatch is um, taking a little look at something, a little glimpse of something. So now I'm going to give you a wee swatch of my swatch. <sighs> oh, yes. Right, okay. Here we go. I'm just sorting out my yarn here. Hold on. Right. So your starting chain. If you're doing the blanket, you are going to be chaining 196, okay? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do three repeats of the 24, which is 72, plus my three stitches, which is 75, uh, plus my one for turning, which is 76. Just so I can do this a little bit faster. Okay, so make a slip knot. Um, the first few instructions I'm going to do, I'm just going to move down a wee bit there, um, as if I'm talking to anybody that's never really done mosaic crochet before. So I'm going to um, really show you how to do the stitches. Uh, and yes, here we go. So make your chain, okay? Uh, you can skip ahead of this once you've got your 196 and uh, meet me back at the beginning. Right, 
Right, got your starting chain done. You've chained 196 stitches. I have chained 76 stitches. Now what you're going to do now is you're going to go back along. Now this is your foundation, foundation row one. So you're going to go back along your starting chain and you are going to single crochet neighbor stitch. So let me just do that. So in the second stitch from the hook, which is this one here, you're going to do a single crochet. Now I'm talking in US terms. If you're in the UK, this would be a double crochet. Now what to do is count every single stitch back along because that'll make sure that you've got your starting chain correct. If you've chained 196 on your starting chain, then going back along you will crochet 195 stitches. Okay. Single crochets. Okay. Carry on all the way along because I know it'll take you a wee bit of time. And meet me back at the end. So I'm just doing the last few ones here. Just at the end just to show you. I do my yarn. Oh gosh, that's a tight one. Maybe should have uh, so yeah, so I am just doing the last few single crochets along my starting chain. A couple more. That's the last one. Okay, and then I'm going to do a chain one to fasten it off, and then I'm going to find my scissors and I'm going to snip it off and give it a wee tighten. Okay, so that's your starting chain. That is foundation row one. Now grab your colour B. Oh, I've got a knot. Do you know what? I can't even be bothered undoing it. I'm just going to snip it off. Right, okay. So back to the beginning. Not the end of the tails. Back on the right hand side. Okay. And you're going to find that first stitch and you're going to put your hook through. That is not even in focus. There we go. See this first stitch here? You're going to put your hook through both loops. Like that and tie on your colour B. Now you can do it every way you want. What I do is I put it over the hook, I pull it through, and I do a chain one, and a wee tighten with the tail, and then back through the same stitch, and do a single crochet. That is your first border stitch. Okay, so on foundation row two, the first stitch you see on the chart is BS, so that is your border stitch. Now, the rest of the chart, um, there are no X's. So no X's, I mean, a, a blank box means you're going to do a back loop single crochet. And this is the same throughout the whole pattern. If it's a blank box, it's a back loop single crochet. If there's an X in the box, that means it's a front loop double crochet. Now, let me just focus on a bit more. So at the first stitch here, see how there's two loops there? See two loops there? Okay. So the one closest to you is your front loop and the one furthest away is your back loop. So you're going to put your hook into that back loop and do a single crochet. And that's a back loop single crochet, that's it. So here's your next stitch, front loop, back loop, so into the middle and single crochet around that back loop. Okay, now you're going to do this all the way until you get to the second last stitch and then you're going to create your final border stitch. So this will take you a wee bit of time as well, but doing this is going to get you used to putting your hook into the back loop. 
not through both loops. The only time you put your hook through both loops is on the border stitch. Now, see how it's curling? This will happen. Don't worry about that. Just get it out of the way. Curling happens. You will be able to fix it with your border. So back loop, single crochet all the way along. I'm just going to do again the last few single crochets. Along here. Uh, it's um, not easy actually crocheting with a plaster, it just kind of feels like it's getting in the way, but so be it. Right. So, see how I'm at the last one now. That's your last back loop and then the very last stitch you're going to go through both loops and do a single crochet and then do a chain one to tighten it. Snip it off and we're going to start again at the beginning. Okay so this is foundation row uh, one and foundation row two. There we go. Now it will curl. See how it's curling like that? Don't worry about it. That's completely normal. So foundation row three, it's exactly the same as foundation row two, except you're using colour A again. So through both loops, for your border stitch, find your yarn, which is on my lap, and tie it on with a chain one. Give it a tighten with the tail and then back through both loops to do your single crochet. And that's your border stitch. And then again, back loop, one front loop, back loop. Back loop, single crochet all the way along. You're going to get a nice bit of a stripe there. Okay, keep going and I'll get you at the end of the row. Okay, I'm just getting towards the end now. A couple more. Second last stitch is a back loop and then your final stitch is your border stitch again. So you're going to go through both loops. Do a single crochet and then chain one and snip it off. Why do um, border stitches go through both loops you ask? It's just to give it a little bit more stability. Okay so that is Foundation row one, foundation row two, foundation row three. Okay, start back at the beginning and you're going to tie on colour B again. Oops, fell off. Now this is all the foundation rows done and now you're going to start on row one. Row one is exactly the same um, as before. And it's all back loop single crochets. So again, start with your border stitch through both loops. Both loops there. Where's my yarn? Tie it on. Chain one. Give the tail a bit of a tug. Back through both loops. And single crochet. And again, back loop, single crochet, all the way along. Now, hold on, hold the bus. 
I want you to count now, okay? So you've got your border stitch, that's that's done. And now I want you to count 24 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, stop. 24 stitches. Okay, now what you, what you want to do is in, the in that 24, get a marker stitch, a marker stitch, a stitch marker. <laughs> uh, I need one with a big. I don't know what that one one is, but it's quite cute. Can I do this with a plaster on? And I want you to put that through that 24th stitch. Okay? And then do it again. Count 24. I'm not going to count this time out loud. Seven. Okay, maybe I can out loud. <laughs> Eight. Fifteen. <laughs> Sixteen. Ah. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, nearly there, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. Stop and put a stitch marker in on that twenty fourth stitch which is there. Oh my God, I can't do this with a plaster on. Oh, right. Okay, and then keep doing that all the way along. And what you'll end up doing is putting a stitch marker in the third stitch from the end, because it's your last um, stitch of the repeat. And then you're going to have your last stitch and then your border stitch. So just to explain last stitches, because I know some people ask me, you do all the repeats in the red box or in the red, um, in the written instructions. You do not include the last stitch in the repeat. The last stitch is only done once at the end of the row, after your repeats are finished and before your final border stitch. If it was a part of the repeat, um, then it would be a part of the repeat, but it's not. It's your last stitch. Okay. So I'm nearly at the end. Oh, now my stitch marker's rattling against the desk. So this is my 24th stitch, grab a stitch marker. I've got a little, I don't know what that one is. Put it into that stitch, okay. And then your last stitch, which whatever it is in the box on this row, it is a single crochet. And then your border stitch. Okay. 
Okay, fasten it off, snip it off. Okay, so you have a stitch marker in every 24th stitch. Not including your border stitch. So you do your border stitch and then you count 24, put a stitch marker in number 24, and then count 24 and put a stitch marker in 24, and then all the way along, 24, stitch marker in the 24th stitch. Create your last stitch and then your border stitch. Okay. Now this is the reason why. Because row two. Right, row two, you're going to use colour A again. Okay, let me get this. So do your border stitch. So you're going to tie on with a chain one and do your border stitch, which is a single crochet through both loops. Okay. Can't get this thing to keep in focus, it's very annoying. So row two, please pay attention to this. I've got a massive top tip underneath the chart which explains it to you. So the repeat starts with two single crochets and ends with one single crochet. Okay, so what to do is do two single crochets in the back loop. Okay, and then you'll see in the chart then it's DC, SC, DC, SC, double crochet, single crochet. And you're going to do that all the way along until you get to your stitch marker. Okay, so let's show you this is your first double crochet. And how that works is you're going to go doing a double crochet over this row into the front loop of the stitch directly below that. So through that loop. Pick it up, three loops in the hook, pull it through two, pull it through two. That is a front loop double crochet. Okay, so the next stitch is a single crochet. So be careful now that you don't do the stitch which is behind the double crochet. If you hold it up straight like that, you'll see it covers it. So it's the next stitch. You're going to do a back loop single crochet. Okay, the next one is it's got an X in the box, so it is a front loop double crochet. So again, following this stitch down to the front loop of that stitch in that row and do a double crochet. And then a single crochet. And then a double crochet. This is where the pattern starts to emerge, okay? And this is how mosaic crochet works because the colour that you're using here is covering the row behind and going into this row and that's how the pattern is created. So you can just keep doing single crochet, double crochet, all the way along until you get to your stitch marker, which is 24 stitches along. Single. Double, single, Our yarn. Okay, so we're nearly at the stitch marker. Go double. And so, where your stitch marker is, you're going to do a back loop single crochet and stop. Now, that is the end of the repeat. Okay, so what you do is you're going to start the repeat again. Now, if you look on the chart, the repeat starts with two single crochets. 
So you've done the last stitch with your single crochet. So new repeat, next stitch is a single crochet. And the next stitch is a single crochet because that's the start of the repeat. Don't just keep doing double crochet, single crochet all the way along. Because the reason that you have these single crochet at the end of at the beginning of sorry, end of the repeat, two single crochets at the beginning of the repeat, is this creates the room for the tree trunks. I've seen so many people do this because they're just kind of like, woohoo, single crochet, double crochet all the way along and they're not actually looking at the chart. So that's why you need your stitch markers, okay? Just to show you where the repeat ends so that you can start the repeat again with your two single crochet. Now I promise you the next row, because you've done this correctly, will be so much easier. Okay, so I've started my repeat with two single crochets and then I'm going to double crochet and single crochet all the way along to my next stitch marker. Okay, just on the last few ones now of the row. Shush stitch markers. I'm going to take them out in a minute anyway, because I don't need them anymore. Okay, so you're going to do a back loop into that stitch where the stitch marker is. And that's the end of your repeat. And now you're going to work, work your last stitch. Now on row two, last stitch, there's no X. So it is a single crochet. And then work your border stitch. Chain one. Oops. Snip it off. Pull it through. Okay, so that's foundation row one, foundation row two, foundation row three, row one, and row two. I'm going to take these stitch markers out. So you can just see if you've done row two correctly, you will have little gaps like that. It won't be like this all the way along. You'll have gaps because these are where your tree trunks start. Oops, forgot about that little guy. Okay, is this what you've got? You're all doing it right? Cool. Okay. On to row three. Row three is easy peasy. Because every time you see a gap, you're going to be double crocheting, effortly double crocheting, and every time uh, there's a double crochet there, you're going to be back loop. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Let me just show you. So tie on your color B. Like this, and your border stitch through both loops. Okay, so on row three, the first two stitches have an X, so they are front loop double crochets. So follow this stitch down and it's that front loop there. So that's one. And then again in that one, so that's two. The next stitch is blank, so it's a back loop single crochet. And then there's an X, so it's a front loop double crochet. You can't ever do a double crochet on top of a double crochet. So if you come across that, you know you made a wee mistake, okay? So this one's really easy. So you just back loop, front loop, back loop, front loop. Get some more yarn. This is one of these patterns because they only have 24 stitches in the repeats. Once, because you're doing a blanket, which is 196 stitches, once you've done the first couple of repeats and uh, you kind of tend to memorize it, so you'll you'll look at the pattern less. By the time you get to the end of the row, you, you know exactly what you're doing. But on this row, it's really simple. Double crochet in the front loop single crochet in the back loop. Oops. Okay. 
okay single crochet and now here is your gap of three stitches and then you are going to front loop double crochet and that's the end of your repeat that is your 24 stitches and the repeat starts with two double crochets again so you pop them in there And that is the very first tree trunk. Yay! Well, actually, no, that's not true. That's half of a tree trunk along there, but this is the first full tree trunk. And then just keep going. Back loop. Front loop, back loop. Front loop. See? See, I told you it was easy. Everybody thinks it looks complicated until they have a shot and then they think, oh no, it's actually really easy because it is and it is very addictive. Everybody will say it's addictive. I mean, crikey, when I first discovered mosaic crochet, what is this wizardry making amazing designs with just two stitches? But it is. And so I haven't been able to put it down. Hence the reason I now design stuff and I can't stop blimmin' designing now. Okay, we're coming up to our next tree trunk. Oops, get in there. And double crochet, and that's the end of your repeat. And then again, the repeat starts with two double crochet. Get some more yarn. And there's another tree trunk. And then the same, and then just keep doing that all the way along to the end. I'll just do this one with you. Nearly there, nearly there. Back loop. loop. Oops. <laughs> I just hit my camera tripod. Okay, nearly there. And so your repeat ends on a double crochet. And that's the end of your repeat. And now you do your last stitch, which on the chart on row three is a double crochet. And then your border stitch through both loops. Snip it off. And that's row three. And that's it guys, that's all you do. And row four um, is pretty much the same as row two. It starts, the repeat starts with um, two single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet all the way along, and then three single crochet above your tree trunks. How cool is that? I have a little confession to make. I'm just going to throw that to the side Sorry, it's on the floor and show you this. So I have actually, okay, fine, I couldn't resist, but I have actually started uh, my blanket. Oh, I can't lose my loop there. I stopped halfway through. 
So this is uh, what my blanket looks like. And this is me just on, what row am I on? Uh, row eight. Um, yes, row eight. And this is me using the Jarbo cookie and limelight and my Stylecraft um, Highland Heathers and Campbell. Look at those colours. Oh, it's just so lovely. So this is the full blanket. Okay, so you can see the trees are just beginning to, that's the, the bottom edge, edge of that tree. And it'll start going up. And that's all it is. So if you want any more videos, um, if you want anything more specific, whatever, fine, let me know and I can do that. Um, it is easy. Ask questions on the group. There's loads of people that have already done Sholark. There's Everybody's just um, quite willing to help out. And it's a great new community on the Facebook group. So, uh, yeah, ask questions. Please, please, please post your progress pics because I can't wait to see what everybody's doing. Um, there's no rush with this. If you're if you're a slow coach like, like me, it doesn't matter if you've already started your show like fab. If you're starting on Saturday, great. Um, there's there's no rush with this. There's no deadlines. There's no time scales. We're just going to be all crocheting along together, okay? But I want to see how you're getting on with it. So post your pics. Alrighty, um, I will obviously do a video later on to show you how I do the border but that's going to be like weeks and weeks away from me um, but I will be doing a double border on this so I'll show you how I do it all right right good luck let me know if you've got any questions um, and happy shellacking bye